Hey guys, this is Dust. In the last video, you guys absolutely killed it. It was my first upload. It's got over 23,000 views right now and over a thousand likes. You guys are insane. Uh, hop in the Discord so I can show my appreciation and uh, let's get into it. Vulcan Mini is a solo duo trio base aimed at groups who care about spaciousness and ease of access. It comes with a starter unit that's between a 2x1 and a 2x2 as far as cost and storage. We'll start off with two triangle foundations, putting our TC behind a door frame. In each direction off of that, we'll put a square and then an airlock on the end. Note that our airlock and this ceiling should be in wood. Go ahead and wall in the rest. We can then throw a ceiling on. Putting the doors in this orientation creates an airlock if both are open. This is the footprint. In this room, we can go ahead and create a standard loot room. You can use whatever design you prefer. Throwing a campfire here gives you early game access to cooking food. We'll go ahead and throw a double door frame on here as well. We can put three furnaces in this corner. Make sure to place them directly in the corners so they don't obstruct the doorway. And your tier one and tier two workbenches will fit here. The tier two can also have a small box underneath it. Next, we can go ahead and place our sleeping bags. I'm placing one in the airlock and one outside of it. This will leave us enough room to place down a research table when we need it. This is incredibly important in early game. Also, lock your TC. After you've gathered the necessary materials, the next step is to expand the base. Coming out of the front airlock, we can start by placing these two triangles, and then another triangle and a square. Continue around the base as I do, and make sure each square has a triangle at the end of it. This is the footprint at the end. Coming over to this side, we can start to build our airlock. 
Hey guys, uh, Future Dust here. I realized while editing that I completely screwed up this airlock. So, um, I'm just gonna show you how to do it quick. Basically, start with a twig foundation and put a triangle on every side of it. The one on the front we can upgrade to sheet metal and the ones on the side can just be stone. Uh, and then we'll destroy the uh, twig foundation in the middle here. And this is where we place our oil refinery. It's easiest to do it now, especially if your foundations are elevated a little bit. Um, but then we can just go ahead and wall this in and make sure this wall is hard side out. And the two side can be stone and the back can be sheet metal. After you've enclosed it, go ahead and throw the roof tiles on so then we can get up to our front door. And then what we're going to do is throw a triangle uh, on here, and this is going to act like our floor, but still make it accessible uh, so we can get to our oil refinery. And then just like the Vulcan, we'll go ahead and throw doors and a window frame on it. We'll also go ahead and throw a double door frame on the back here and upgrade this to stone. And we actually aren't going to throw a ceiling on this yet because we still have to place two shotgun traps, two large boxes, um, and a floor tile. So what we can do for now is just build up half a floor and uh, just kind of leave it. We will uh, eventually honeycomb the roof, which will get it to the same half wall height. Uh, and then we can go ahead and add those items uh, from up here. Anyways, sorry about that. Let's get back into the video. Now that the airlock is done, we can go ahead and start building up the honeycomb around the perimeter of the base. This will allow us to seal it off and give us a safe place to be able to build out the interior. Now, I totally forgot to put honeycomb behind these two squares. You can either do that now, or you can do that after the base is done. Now we'll put a ceiling on it, except for this triangle. And here we'll put a wall and a double door frame. I'm going to upgrade the core to armored as well. Coming into our original airlock, we can upgrade the floor to sheet metal. We can start to remove the items from our starter base and chop out all of the wood walls. I'm just going to fill them in with honeycomb and sheet metal. Once we get to the core, we're going to make sure we armor these. Go ahead and chop out the rope. Where each of the loot rooms will go, we'll use four half walls, and this will give us something to stick all of the floor tiles on. Now I'm finishing up all of the internal honeycomb. For each of these loot rooms, we can actually just lean over the edge to put the floor in. Something different from the original Vulcan is the addition of full square floor tiles on the top. This allows us to fit a little bit more storage and actually slows down rate if it's online. Instead of being able to splash the garage door and a ladder hatch at the same time to go into the core, they'll have to go through them individually. This can buy you valuable time if you're online. Going into the core, we can create this jump up.
and put two boxes in this orientation. If we point the ladder hatch this direction, it'll allow us to get past the two boxes. We can upgrade this double door in the core to an armored door or a garage door, whichever you can afford. I'm going to add double door frames everywhere there's an open socket and put garage doors on them. This is where I realized I had made the mistake building the front airlock. We can put a rug over top to cover up the oil refinery so it's not easily visible from the outside. On our roof we can start by adding half floors and a triangle frame. We'll actually have the hard side facing in. And then build two full walls on top of it. Face the ladder hatch this way to create an airlock with the garage door below it. Next we'll honeycomb the loot rooms in sheet metal and the gaps in between the sheet metal with stone. Now we're going to be finishing up the airlock. We'll start off by using the shotgun trap exploit that was shown to me by Nine in my Discord. He also has a YouTube channel, so make sure you check it out. This will make the shotgun traps nearly invisible from the outside until it's already too late. By the time you can actually see the barrel, they'll be able to hit you. Up here we can throw a large box and make sure you throw a code lock on it just in case anybody gets in your airlock. Then we'll throw a triangle ceiling on here and throw another box on top of it. Again, throw a code lock on this. Then we'll cap it off. I'm throwing a shotgun trap on this top chute, and then we can go ahead and finish it by adding another triangle here. This will turn this garage door and ladder hatch into an airlock. Even if both garage doors and the ladder hatch are all left open, nobody can get in the base. This is how I like to put together my loot rooms, but feel free to put whatever spin on it you want.
I like to throw the tier 3 workbench here and you can put a small box under it. If you pull it far enough to the right, you'll be able to fit a repair bench here very easily. This can also take two small boxes in it. The reason I didn't put a shotgun trap underneath the jump up is because people can actually drain it by sitting on top of the repair bench. Now I'm putting a barbecue in a small box here. You can use it as a jump up to check for door campers as well as cook food. Coming into the core, we can replace this sheet metal door with an armored door. And the trick to making this even stronger is to put a vending machine directly in front of it. We'll still be able to access the armored door and the TC through the vending machine, but it shouldn't take splash damage if it's lined up properly. I'm putting a double door frame on here so we can put another garage door. Feel free to upgrade these to armored if you want. I found in raid tests that it prevents things from falling apart too early in a raid. These two areas are key because it's your first loot room, but it's also the furthest on the door path, so you want the wall raid to be about the same or more. Thanks again for all the support. I would appreciate it if you drop a like and a sub, and as always, the link for my Discord is in the description, so stop by and say hi. We'll see you guys later.